Hello everyone and welcome back to another pair video on the channel. My name is Antoine and today we have an iPhone XS Max with no touch problem. And uh, as you can see now, I don't know what you call this problem in your country, no sensor, no touch. <laughs> but now we are waiting for the phone to boot up. So I'm going to show you. Here we go, as you can see the sensor is not working. Uh, but the tap to wake is working, so that means that it could be the screen. To be more specific, the touch screen flex, you just need to change it. Uh, so now I'm going to show you um, the phone, how, he, how, how the phone behaves. And then we're going to test other working screen, other touch functional screen. Just to make sure that it's a screen touch problem. If not, then there's something to do with the board. Uh, just a little information, uh, if the tap to wake is working, then there is a very big chance that it could be the sensor flex damaged or something. Now for the iPhone uh, X and XS and XS Max, uh, you can just change the flex because it's soldered to the uh, sensor itself. But for the iPhone 11 and up, iPhone 11 Pro and up, uh, you need to change the whole or separate the touch from the OLED screen to change the sensor itself. So, as you can see, the same result on the other screen, the other touch working screen. Uh, so, I guess now we're going to remove the board and uh, jump under the microscope to see what the problem. Let's go. So, here we are under the microscope. We still didn't remove the board, but uh, in my case, I always check the touch connector. So, here's my multimeter on the screen. And now we're going to test all the lines who have any disconnection or a short, uh, and of course in uh, diet mode with our multimeter. So here we are, this is our ground, and as you can see at the top of the touch connector, there is a picture that I took or a screenshot it from AZXW, just to make sure that you can see the value and what I'm measuring. So now we have two grounds, and I guess we only have one OL, which is without value in diet mode so must be all the rest all the pads the rest of the pads must be with a value so here we go still everything looks fine okay our last ground alrighty Okay, still have, okay, I guess we have a disconnection over here, let's try from the other side, and uh, yep, as you can see we don't have any value on the ninth pin, or the 12th pin as shown in ZXW, now let's measure the rest of the pads to check if everything is okay beside this pin, uh, now I guess, uh, yep, the line called uh, AP2 touch scan clock connector that goes to an FL, which connects between the CPU clock line and the touch connector, so first, let's check the FL in diet mode. If we, uh, of course, if we still don't have any value in the other side of the FL, that means that we have a disconnection between the boards, or worse, it could be a disconnection between the CPU and the touch connector itself, or the upper board. So yeah, the other side uh, of the FL is without value. So that means that now we're going to remove the board and separate the two boards, and then we'll check the connection between the two boards and see where is the problem. So we remove the board and before we separate the boards, so there is a test point to check in the other side of the board if there is any connection. So we can do a jumper directly to the connector. And uh, yep, there is no connection. So that means that we probably have a disconnection between the two boards because the line is clock line output from the CPU. And now we can confirm that we have a problem with the connection board. And also a uh, little info, this phone has been already been in another service. So expecting the unexpected. Okay, now we separated the boards and what a mess from the thermal paste to the grade pads. As you can see, we have a lot of grade pads, uh, grade out pads, which caused our problem. And of course, a lot of the pads are ground, but our AP2 touch clock line is there. So I'm going to clean everything up and then test the grade pads and most importantly, the AP2 touch pad if there is a connection. So we don't have a disconnection between the CPU and the line itself, or the pad itself. 
and of course uh, you can see I'm speed forwarding a lot in this video a lot of parts I'm speed forwarding uh, just to make sure that it's not that long and so you can get uh, the idea of the prayer so we've cleaned everything up and now we're going to test all the pads but first thing I'm going to test the connection between uh, the RF board the pad itself and the connector and as you can see here's my multimeter so this is the AP2 touch that goes to NFL and now we're going to see if we have a connection to the pad itself yep we have a connection that means that the problem was in the uh, upper board now let's go and get the upper board and see if we have a value on the pad itself most of the grayed out uh, pads are ground and be baseband related and as you can see, yep, we have all our readings, our values are there and uh, let's see those gone pads, I guess they are all ground it doesn't matter if they are ground so yep, uh, now let's go and uh, test the boards together in board tester now we're going to test everything with the board tester, always check everything before you solder the boards back together and in this one all the connections are present because sometimes the AP2 touchline is disconnected between the pad and the FL in the RF board and of course you can do a jumper if you don't have a connection but in my case the board had an impact and the pads were grayed out as you can see the sensor is working fine uh, of course I'm just saying that in case other disconnection scenarios so now let's go and uh, soldered everything back together together we are going to test the touch functional let's connect the screen over here and also I would like to mention that because it uh, was just a border ball I explained a lot of stuff in this video and made a lot of stuff clear regarding the diagnostics and how to fix the problem so I hope this video was helpful for you so now let's go and uh, turn on the phone hope we can see an Apple logo yep here we go this is the first good sign for the phone to be functional yeah <clears throat> let's wait 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 okay here we go our phone is back back to life it was alive but without the touch function and as you can see the tap to wake is working and the sensor is also working so yep everything looks fine the cameras looks okay yep everything looks okay sensor is working and back to normal so i guess uh, that's it for this video thanks for watching if the video was helpful please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for additional content in the future and as always stay safe and have a good day and we'll catch you guys in another repair video peace out